Welcome to part four of lecture three of Laplace aerodynamics. So we need turbulence models to be able to estimate the values of these new terms. What do we mean by a turbulence model? It's actually a model for those new shear stress terms. Many such models exist. But here we're going to focus on the ones that are most useful for, I would say, current day, external flow, CFD, and these are called eddy viscosity models. The one is the K-epsilon two-equation model, and the other is the shear stress transport, or SST, two-equation model. These eddy viscosity models assume what we call isotropic turbulence. Basically, it means that all the turbulent stresses depend on a single proportionality constant, the eddy viscosity. So there's no variation in the direction, directionality of the, this eddy viscosity. The various models essentially just differ in how that eddy viscosity is, is calculated. Both of the models we're going to consider here require the solution of two additional partial differential equations alongside the, the RANS or URANS equation. To understand what these are, we need to look at the concepts of turbulence kinetic energy and eddy dissipation rate. So the turbulence kinetic energy is related to the intensity of the turbulence. Last time we defined the turbulence intensity, right, to be u is the square root of u prime uh, squared bar over u bar. Um, and if we take a half of the numerator squared, this is called the turbulent kinetic energy, right? So k uh, is one half times u prime squared plus v prime squared plus w prime squared. So that if we know the local mean velocity and the turbulence intensity, we can compute k and vice versa. The eddy dissipation rate captures the destruction of turbulence, right? So this epsilon is the rate at which turbulence kinetic energy is transformed into heat. Physically, this occurs at the very smallest scales when uh, we have small motions that are, that are so tiny that the uh, viscous effects dominate over the inertial effects. So, the K epsilon model relates the eddy viscosity to K and epsilon, so we get this turbulent viscosity as some constant, which is just a tuned parameter of the model, and it's related to K squared over epsilon. So the problem becomes, how do we find K and epsilon? So basically, we solve two additional equations, as alluded to earlier, for these parameters. And here's the equations. Um, they look really complicated. Basically, they're just transport equations with some... Uh, Dissipate, uh, sort of diffusion, uh, convection, diffusion, and source terms for each. And these are essentially empirically derived equations. The values of the constants are also de determined empirically. There, there's basically no theor theoretical basis for quantifying those. So normally what has been done in the past is a series of experiments have been used to determine the values of the constants. But the thing is, the constants aren't universal. They depend, to some extent, on the details of the flow field. So the turbulence models are therefore approximations, and different models tend to be suitable for different types of flows, which is one of the reasons there are so many models that exist. So some of the best applications for turbulence models for the K epsilon 2 equation model, um, if you've got planar flows that have shear, layer, shear layers, flows with recirculation, and they're really good for unconfined flows that are not dominated by pressure gradients. On the other hand, the other model that we've been talking about, the shear stress transport model, is better for resolving the details in flows where there are separations that are not caused by geometric features, but rather by the presence of adverse pressure gradients. And in particular, these models do well in internal flows that have strong adverse pressure gradients, for example, in um, compressors uh, in turbo machinery. So when we're thinking about flows around cars, the K-epsilon model tends to be a good choice because there's no overall pressure gradient to the flow. Of course, there's local pressure gradients near the surface, um, but the unconfined nature of the flow is well suited to the K-epsilon model. 